إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا مهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حقا تقاته حقا تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفي لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعله عوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين Our praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Our praise is due to Allah who has blessed us with the great blessing, the great gift of Islam. Alhamdulillah ala ni'mati al-Islam wa kathabi, wa kathabihi, or kathabiha ni'mah. Our praise is due to Allah. Our praise is due to Allah who has revealed the scripture unto his servant and has made no crookedness therein. Our praise is due to Allah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, it behooves us to praise Allah. Praising Allah is a reminder to ourselves that regardless of the blessing, a shukr is praise in response to a blessing. Alhamdu is praise acknowledging the status of the one bestowing the blessing. So without any gifts, without any blessings, we praise Allah. Because لِأَنَّهُ هُوَ Allah, Because He is Allah. We praise Allah because He is Allah. Deserving of our praise. أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد Oh people, you are in desperate need of Allah. Our need for Allah, if someone thinks they don't need Allah, maybe they become an atheist. We don't need Allah. You needed Allah from the minute you came into this world. What newborn can fend for itself? A fish doesn't have that problem. The fish comes out of the egg and swims away. Snake doesn't have that problem. The snake comes out of the egg and slithers away. A newborn baby can't do anything. It can't feed itself. It can't clothe itself. It can't shelter itself. It cannot protect itself from the element. It can do absolutely nothing. And then the فَدَرَّبَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقًا The human becomes so arrogant that he sets parables before Allah and forgets his creation. That he came into this world and he says, I don't need Allah now that he's grown. He needed Allah to put the mercy in the hearts of his parents, to feed him, to change him, to clean him, 
to shelter him. He needed the mercy of Allah, she needed the mercy of Allah from the minute they came into this world. And were it not for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he or she would not be the atheist, arrogant person they are today. La ilaha illallah, walhamdulillah. Want to relate a story? I apologize. I told Imam Safwan, I'm going to talk about the hadith of the leper, the bald man and the blind man. He said, I did that one very recently. But repetition is an excellent pedagogical tool. Repetition is an excellent teaching tool. So perhaps we can uh, reinforce what Imam Safwan said. So Abu Huraira relates that the Prophet وسلم, narrated the story of a leper, a bald man, and a blind man. And Allah wanted to test them. So he sent an angel to the leper. And he said, what is the most, would be the most beloved thing to you? He said to have beautiful skin so that people wouldn't be repulsed by my appearance. And the leper touched him. He had beautiful, beautiful, perfect skin. And he said, what would be the most beloved wealth to you? And he said, camels. And Allah gave him a pregnant she-camel. And then he went to a bald man, the angel that is. And he said, what would be the most beloved to you? He said, to have beautiful hair. And he touched him. And his hair was beautiful, long, flowing locks beautiful hair. And he asked him, what would be the most beloved wealth to you? He said, cows. So he gave him a, pre a pregnant she-cow, a pregnant heifer. Then he went to the blind man. And he said, what would be the most beloved thing to you? He said, to have my eyesight restored so I could see the people and witness things. So the leper touched them and his blindness was cured. And he asked him, what would be the most beloved wealth to you? He said, sheep. So he gave him a preg pregnant sheep. And all of these, each of the three, the, the pregnant one bore a generation, a, 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 a bounteous offspring, and they multiplied and multiplied till they had wide swaths of livestock. And then the angel came back. He went to the leper. He said, I've been traveling a long way and I'm, I'm tired. I just need a camel, one camel, to continue my journey. And the, the leper said to him, I'm sorry, but I have a lot of obligations. I need this wealth to fulfill my obligations. And he, he said, don't I know you? He said, Weren't you a leper and a poor man? You had nothing. He said, no, you're mistaken. I inherited this wealth generation after generation. And the angel said to him, if you're lying, may Allah send you back to your previous state. And he lost his wealth and he lost his beautiful complexion. He was back into his leprosy. Then he went to the bald man. He asked him the same thing. And the bald man also said, I have many obligations, I need my wealth. And I inherited this wealth. Didn't want you, no, want you a bald man, you, have, you were poor, you had nothing. No, I inherited this generation after generation. And he said, the angel said to him, if you're lying, may you be returned back to your previous state. And he lost everything. Then he went to the blind man. He asked the same question, just can you give me one sheep? And the blind man, he said, take whatever you want. I was blind and Allah gave me my sight and I was poor and I, I, Allah gave me all of this wealth. Take anything you want. Take it all if you want. And he said, no, keep your wealth. Keep your wealth. And your two companions, they were suffering because of their arrogance and their dishonesty and you've benefited because of your truthfulness. My dear brothers and sisters, we're all tested. We're all tested. A lot of people are struggling 
with the situation in Palestine. How could this happen? Where is Allah Ta'ala's mercy? They're shaken. More so than the people experiencing the brutalities of the Israeli, the Zionists. They're shaken more than them. We started with Alhamdulillah. Every Palestinian I've seen interview, Alhamdulillah. Woman carrying her baby, dead baby. Alhamdulillah. People mangled by shrapnel, Alhamdulillah. Burned by white phosphorus, Alhamdulillah. And it's not easy. I'm trying to belittle the suffering, but just to emphasize we have to acknowledge and understand the nature of our blessings. Because if we do, we'll understand it's all a test. And this, this hadith summarizes it. We're tested with good and we're tested with difficulty. We're tested with good and we're tested with difficulty. Sometimes it's a good time. It's an easy time, and sometimes it's a hard time. As they say, يَوْمٌ لَكَ وَيَوْمٌ عَلَيْكَ There'll be a day, a time when things are in your favor, and there'll be times when things are going against you. That's the nature of the world. Allah Ta'ala tells us, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٍ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٍ مِثْلُ وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَامِ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ That if some hardship, literally some injury, but we could say a hardship, a trial, has befallen you, then your adversaries, they were similarly tested. فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْهُمْ مِثْلُ Muslims aren't always weak, generally speaking. And we will not always be weak, bi'idnillah. The Zionists, the Jews were not always powerful and influential. The Holocaust is real. Don't fall for any temptation to engage in Holocaust denial, it's real. It's documented, it's authenticated, it's real. The pogroms in all of these European countries, they're real. Particularly in places like Poland and Russia. They're real, my brothers and sisters. So the, the Jews were weak. Now they're influential. But it's not always going to be like that. Not because I want it to be that way, this is what Allah Ta'ala is telling us. So the test is, just as the blind, the leper, the bald man and the blind man were tested with poverty, he found them, the angel found them all poor. They were tested with physical disabilities of some type. And then they received, their, then they were tested with wealth. And they were tested with the removal of their difficulties. That's the nature of life. Tests are going to come. How will we respond? So those who are struggling, your test is a test of faith. Will your faith be strong in the face of the suffering of others? Not even your own personal suffering. The suffering of others, will your, test, will your faith be strong? Our dear brothers and sisters in Palestine are tested with the test of patience, sabr. And we're tested with the test of shukr, gratitude. We're all tested. But this world is a test. One of the reasons we warn, particularly our young people, against buying into these materialistic Kafir worldviews is that they do not prepare a believer for the reality of life. Ideologies are a false picture of reality. It's a, it's a sanitized, idealized ideology, idealized 
generalization of human reality. Human reality is complex. And as the song says, some of you are old enough to remember the song that said, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't promised us a rose garden in this world. He's promised us tests. تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ لِيَبَلُّوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسِنُ عَمَلًا أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسِنُ عَمَلًا أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ Glorified is the one in whose, blessed is the one in whose hand is the dominion of all things and he over all things has power. The one who has created death and life in order to test you which of you are best indeed. أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُضُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُوا الَّذِينَ خَضَوا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Do you think you'll enter paradise and there's not yet come to, do, to you the likes of that which afflicted those who preceded you? They encountered, to summarize Ba'sat wa Dara, every conceivable difficulty. Disease, famine, hardship, drought, natural disaster, personal loss, calamities, until they were shaken. And they, they were shaken until the messenger and those who believed along with him said, When does the help of Allah come? أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ The help of Allah is near. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى In difficulty there's ease. Sometimes people mistranslate this. They say difficulty leads to ease. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى In difficulty there's ease. Where is the ease? The ease lies in the deputing the difficulty to Allah. We're weak. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Humans are created weak. But Allah is strong. Allah is powerful. لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزُ الْقَوِي قَوِي وَنْ عَزِيزُ Allah is mighty and powerful. And we give our, our struggles to Allah, then the ease comes. At the end of a qasida, the nadi, the sha'ir, he said, إِذَا كُنْتَ فِي كُلِّ حَالٍ مَعِي He starts out acknowledging his weakness. We have to acknowledge our weakness to Allah. أَتَيْنَكَ بِالْفَقْرِ يَا ذَا الْغِنَى وَأَنْتَ الَّذِي لَمْ تَزَلْ مُحْسِنَى We come to you acknowledging our poverty, our need. O oh, the one possessing all wealth, free of all need. وَأَنْتَ الَّذِي لَمْ تَزَلْ مُحْسِنَى You're the one who continues to do good to us. We turn on the tap every time the water comes out. Then at the end, إِذَا كُنْتَ فِي كُلِّ حَالٍ مَعِي فَعَنْ حَمْلِ زَادِي أَنَا أَنَا فِي الْغِنَى If you in every situation I find myself in, if you are with me, then I, through you, have freed myself from need. Through Allah. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَ Give it to Allah, brothers and sisters. Turn to Allah, brothers and sisters. Turn to Allah. Depute the affair to Allah. Acknowledge our need for Allah. Acknowledge our weakness as weak, vulnerable human creatures. And find strength to, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're being tested. We're being tested. This is the nature of life. And we, we turn to Allah to assist us. We turn to Allah to assist us. And in the, so as individuals, we're tested. But we're tested as nations. We mentioned, the Jews weren't always powerful. They were tested with weakness. They were tested with all of the nations. And some people say this is why. The guilt of afflicting the Holocaust on them has not led nations like Germany to give their unconditional support for the Zionist Holocaust on the Palestinians. Guilt. 
It's a theory. But they were tested. The Muslims were strong. How did we do when we were strong? How did we perform? In the face of the slave trade, how did the Muslims do? Knowing the only legitimate way to gain slaves, the prisoners of war. How did the Muslims do? In the face of an opportunity to make da'wah, going to lands like their ancestors, where the majority of the people weren't Muslims. How did the Muslims do? We know how our ancestors did. They brought Islam to most of the places most of you are from. Some of you, your, your people have only been Muslims for three or four generations. They brought Islam. How did the current generation do when they went to foreign lands where there were no Muslims? It's all that people are tested, nations are tested. And, and the test today will not be the test of tomorrow. Today our test is a test, generally speaking, of shukr. Are we appreciative for the blessings Allah has bestowed upon us? Are, are we, are, it's a test of faith, a test of iman. Will our faith remain strong and face in the face of the difficulties we see all around us? It's a test of faith. It's a test of thought. Will we embrace ideologies? Someone sent me a text two days ago. They, 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 they want to teach in the Muslim school critical race theory. What do you think? I said, just teach the struggle of the people during the, aspira, the African diaspora. Why do you have to couch it in the context of a, of a Kafir ideology? And now they're debating. Why do you say it's a Kafir ideology? To digress briefly. Critical race theory says white people are inherently, unchangeably racist. They're irrevocably racist. Where is Allah's power? Allah can't say being it is and they're no longer racist. Critical race theory judges the whole, whole group. Islam says, you judge individually. No bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another. Critical race theory says, white folks, renounce your privilege. Islam says, through sadaqah and zakat, share your privilege. If I told some to renounce their privilege, they might be poor like a lot of our folks. Then we're all losers. Don't renounce it, share it. That's what Islam says. So we have to, may Allah bless us to be spiritually strong. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be intellectually strong. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be physically strong. It takes physical strength. Why, why, why are more people dead in Gaza? And the, the, what's acknowledged is the tip of the iceberg. We don't know how many people are under the rubble. Uh, Hamas undercount. Why, why is there, oh they have, they're, they're putting pain on their faces to fake injury. You bomb and blast the whole place to the equivalent of an atomic bomb in an area the size of Philadelphia. Why do people need to fake like their injuries? And then they prove it's, it's, it's a, a Lebanese film and they still leave it on their website of the IDF. Why, why fake it? You don't have to fake it. Aren't there enough dead people? You don't have to undercount. You blast and blow up the whole place, oh, they're undercounting. Make, make you feel a little better for supplying the bombs or dropping the bombs or trying to win the battle that's already lost. Intellectually strong, we provide the framing they say, uh, world public opinion is against the Palestinians. That reduces the world to the governing elites of West Germany and North America. I mean, Western Europe and North America. 
The whole global south is with the Palestinians. The whole Security Council, except for one veto, is with the Palestinians. The whole General Assembly of the UN is with the Palestinians. How could world, global opinion be against them? Because for some people, only they are the world. Only they are the world. And some people buy into that framing. We create our own frames based on our history, based on our Quran, based on our Sunnah, based on the sayings of our ulama, based on the historical struggle of our people, wherever they may be. That's the foundation of the framing that we accept. So we're testing in myriad ways. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to pass these tests. May Allah bless us with strong faith. May Allah bless us with strong minds. May Allah bless us with strong bodies. Palestinians are strong people. They're tough people. They're tough people. One Israeli wrote in Haaretz that we've lost this struggle because Allah put us with these people and they're so tough they're not going anywhere. A lot of people would have left the West Bank and Gaza a long time ago. But our brothers and sisters are tough and they're strong and they're resistant and they're resilient and they're not going anywhere inshallah. Let's make sure we don't go anywhere. We do everything in our power to assist them and to stand with them, even if it's in our prayer, even if it's believing in their struggle and believing that they will be victorious. How could it be otherwise? وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى وكان حقا علينا نصر المؤمنين Allah said it's a right we've imposed upon ourselves to assist the believers. May Allah Ta'ala bless us, strengthen us. May Allah Ta'ala give us a long historical view. A long historical view where we see that we can witness and understand the ebbs and flows of history. يَوْمٌ لَكَ وَيَوْمٌ عَلَيْكَ There'll be a day that's in your favor and there'll be a time where you encounter difficulty. The common denominator, they're both just a test. أقول قولي هذا وصلت الله لي ولكم وسائر المؤمنين يقوم استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات